Hey hockey fans, welcome back to the Oilers Fanatic. So we got a few topics to go over today. Uh, there was some Zach Cassian news on Oilers now with Bob Stoffer, and I put together some more by request topics for you guys to check out. So I threw everything together here in one video, so let's get started. If it's your first uh, stop by the channel, please uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy what you see, and you can also follow along on Twitter and Instagram at OilersFanaticYT. Cassian was a guest on Oilers Now with Bob Stoffer, and today he made it known he's feeling good and can't wait to get the season started. Bob Stoffer brought up the idea again that we are likely to see Cassian in the top six. We should see a few different lineups in camp. The Oilers want more size in the top six, and Cassian provides that. I know Cassian really divides fans. Whenever I post something about him, people are mad if I discuss him being in the top six, but it sure sounds like it's at least something that's going to be tried out. My take, if we get the old Cassian back, he's hitting, scoring, being effective. I'm more than happy with him in the top six. I wouldn't take Jesse Pugliarvi out to make room for him. I'd move Yamo down to the third line. I think the third line ultimately might be a better place for him. I know he's had good chemistry for that uh, period of games with Dry and uh, Nuge, but they were back together for a short period of time, at least last year, I believe, and they weren't able to come up with that magic again. But we know Tippett is bad for always scrambling the lines around, so even still, regardless, I think it's better to try Yamo on the third line. Basically, if they can find a way to get three lines going, that's the ideal situation. And maybe the fourth line guys can chip in with the odd goal, shut things down, create energy like a fourth line is supposed to do. Next up, uh, I'm going to kick off the by request topics, my top five favorite teams. This topic was submitted by Bradley McLaughlin. So at number one is the Edmonton Oilers for obvious reasons. Number two, I like the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, they were my dad's team growing up. Uh, he grew up in Ontario. I'm originally from Ontario. I moved to Alberta when I was six. So if I'd stayed in Ontario, Detroit probably would have been my team too. But uh, they always have a special place in my heart for my dad. Uh, number three, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, cheer for them for family reasons as well. Have family and the Penguins are their team. Uh, number four, Philadelphia Flyers. Same thing, family reasons. And number five, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now I want to point out that I'm in no way a Maple Leafs fan, but I will cheer for them for family reasons if they're like playing the Calgary Flames or something like that, but like not for a Stanley Cup or anything ever like that. <laughs> okay, so thanks for Bradley for uh, sending that in. Next topic, the 2022 free agent targets for the Edmonton Oilers. This topic was submitted again by Alex Z. For this topic, I went over the roster and looked at the potential holes. So I made the assumption that Yamo signs a two-year deal, which would give the team two openings at forward next summer, with Yessi coming up as an RFA and Josh Archibald as a UFA. So my top line has currently Zach Hyman and Connor McDavid with an open spot on right wing. Second line, I put Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Leon Dreisaitl, and Kyler Yamamoto. Yamamoto, I gave him a $1.5 million salary. I'm thinking maybe a two-year, $3 million deal is what's ultimately worked out between them. On the third line, I have Warren Fogle, Ryan McLeod, and Zach Cassian. And on the fourth line, I have Devin Shore and Derek Ryan with an open spot on fourth line right wing. On defense, I've assigned players showing our potential depth. These aren't necessarily the combinations they go with, but it gives you an idea of what the team has available. I don't see any new players being brought in unless there's a trade. Uh, in the top pairing, Darnell Nurse and Tyson Berry. Second pairing, Duncan Keith and Cody Cece. Third pairing, Slater Cuckoo and Evan Bouchard. And Philip Broberg. I have as the seventh defenseman, but again, those aren't necessarily the combinations, just basically listing the depth that the Oilers have. And in goal, uh, I have Mike Smith, Stuart Skinner, and Ilya Konovalov as our options next year. I think we will see some combination of either Smith and Skinner or Smith and Konovalov. There is a chance the Oilers could bring in a goalie, though, if Smith has a really bad year or Skinner or Konovalov don't look ready. Here's a few possibilities of goaltenders they could bring in. Uh, 
Darcy Kemper, we know the Oilers had interest in him this past summer. Thomas Grice, I think he'd be good in a tandem with Smith. He might even be a target for the Oilers this year. Uh, Brian Elliott, who's uh, Andre Vasilevsky's backup in Tampa Bay this year. He could be a cheap option. And also Anton Forsberg. Basically, that's more if they're going to try um, Smith and Konovala, for example, and they want to have like a little extra insurance beyond Stuart Skinner. You could sign Anton Forsberg again. Hopefully you're not having to use three goalies so you don't lose them on the waiver wire, stuff like that. Up front, uh, don't be surprised if Josh Archibald is re-signed. I think the others will at least try to re-sign Yessi Pugliarvi. They should be able to make it work. There's things you can do to create more cap space to make it work. If they are both back, that covers off the holes at forward. The Oilers definitely won't be big game hunting next summer. Some cheaper options they could look at that could provide some grit, toughness, and experience to the bottom six include Pat Maroon, Curtis Gabriel, and Kyle Clifford. It's also entirely possible the Oilers go with internal options for those positions like Tyler Benson or Cooper Marodi if they end up sticking around past this training camp. This will obviously be a topic that we delve into more much deeper next summer when we have a clearer picture of the team's needs and who's still available to pursue. The remaining UFAs the Oilers could look at, and this topic was sent in by Drayden Cassie. The Oilers are shopping in the bargain bin right now. Uh, Kyler Yamamoto should be the last big free agent signing. Aside from Yamo, I think the Oilers are looking at PTO targets. Uh, forwards we've mentioned quite a bit are Tyler Ennis, Tyler Bozak, Alex Galchenyuk, and Eric Stahl. The Canucks reportedly have interest in Ennis, and the Pens are looking at uh, Tyler Bozak with uh, the injuries to Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. On defense, the Oilers are looking at right shot depth. So some names that are left are Jason Demers, who my money's on for the Oilers to target with a PTO, and another name they could target is Sammy Vatnin. Nobody too exciting, but the Oilers don't have much left to spend. Aside from Miamo, they have to be a league minimum contracts. That's all for today, guys. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for all the latest Oilers content, and uh, sound off with any comments you have below. You've been watching and listening to the Oilers Fanatic. Thanks for being a fan.